Friday morning before we have to go to work. We've got the laptops all here waiting to go to work and um, we're also sitting waiting uh, just to get pulled out to replace a seacock. So Luna's taking this chance to get some daddy hugs in. Hey Lulu. We kept her up late last night because we were uh, watching all the fish jumping here in the bay. <laughs> had you had the blast? Yeah. An animal, I think it's an animal, not a rock. <clears throat> not a bird, not a rock, definitely not a rock. Could be an animal. Probably an animal. Um, so yeah, the sea cook's getting changed today. Hopefully we'll be back in the water in the evening. Fingers crossed? Fingers crossed. Yeah, so the seacock, <clears throat> we've got uh, composite seacocks on Ragdoll and they were installed at uh, a build in 1995 and some of them are starting to become a little suspect. I don't know what the life span of uh, these composite seacocks is, but um, this one in particular, it's a sink drain and it's leaking from the, the handle and I, I I don't know enough about them to confidently dismantle and replace whatever o-ring there is in the water. So we've got true design. Uh, we've got a true design seacock with all the bends and fittings waiting to go in. Um, and I, I think over time we'll just sort of start migrating towards true design on a few of them. Uh, just to you know, give us a little bit of peace of mind on some of the more, the more suspect ones. Because so, there's another one, isn't there, that's potentially leaking. We're just not really quite sure. We're going to investigate it. We'll investigate that one. I, I, I have a feeling that might be coming from further up the hill, so to speak, underneath the toilet. So there's a, you know, it could be a shower leak. It could be a heating leak. It could be a sink leak. It could be anything but a seacock leak where that is. So we'll keep investigating that one and just see where we get with it. But... But this one in particular is definitely leaking and it's, it's like a little stream coming out the top of the handle. So we'll, get, uh, we'll be able to show you that and, and, see, and see how that's been leaking. So wish us luck. Yeah, so yeah. So the guys at the yard are going to haul us out in about a half an hour. And they're very, very kind to let us sit in the travel lift today. We'll just go between two tides hopefully. So we're out in this morning tide. And hopefully, if we're all good, back in on the afternoon tide, if we get it done quickly enough. So Chris and I have just been talking about how I candled the toilet because he has made it uninhabitable. So he's had this great idea. Go so on. Darius says, maybe I should go in with a scuba tank. And I'm like, no, 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 you don't need a scuba tank. What you should do is sit on the bog, get your snorkel, stick it out the window, and there we go. Perfect. Okay, are we ready to go? Yes, we are. Um, you, you have one really important job for me. Uh-huh. So, apart from keeping the dogs out of the way, it's going to be, um, you're going to be on the bow, mm -hmm. um, making sure that okay. I keep good distance to the force day, because I don't want a repeat of uh, crashing into the, the travel lift with the force day. Yeah, that wasn't fun. No, that was expensive. Thanks, Kevin, for fixing it. So, uh, yeah, you, you just keep on the bow and give us distance either by hand signal or telling us what's what. The rest will hopefully manage itself. Right, yeah. let's go. I'm really hoping this is going to be a quick job where we just get her out, get the seeker replaced, and we're straight back in and can go sailing. But things don't always go to plan, so fingers crossed. The girls are wondering what the heck is going on. Hey, Meme Z. Okay. Okay. Right, we're good. Fine there. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, so we're good now. Yeah. 
looks good. I think we've got us. Yeah. It's fairly safe, it's got a mile distance. Perfect! This is <clears throat> nerve wracking. It is. It could, it could be a slightly bigger hoist for us. So we're a, a metre or so, about half a metre away from the forestay. And the back hoist is all the way to the back. And even then, look how far forward it is. So it's, uh, it kind of is what it is with this lift a bit. It feels a bit precarious. Ta-da! That wasn't very enthusiastic. <laughs> I just hate doing this. There's no one likes it, I'll turn the engine blower off. Right. James doing a fantastic job getting us uh, into somewhere. So it turns out we're going to send the slings overnight because the high tide today is at 10 p.m. And launching at 10 p.m. Not the wisest idea should anything go wrong. I went a bit better than uh, my last time bringing the boat out. Last time I uh, hit the uh, forestay on the, the cross beam there. Which is part of the reason we had our rigging done, because that needed to be done too. Yeah, it was an expensive mistake. And it took a, a fair bit of uh, ordering parts and getting the right bits in and dismantling and it was just a pain in the, the butt that we didn't need. No happy, sad puppy. Who's this sad puppy? Who's this saddest puppy? So the yard is just uh, reversing us into this little slip. Where we're gonna sit overnight. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be get to work as soon as uh, as soon as we're settled and docked in slings. So guys are just setting us down on blocks now. Got a sinking feeling. <laughs> I see you. I'm a big girl. She just loves hugs and love. She loves love. Come on, Lulu, heel. See if you do it. You're battered. <laughs> Come on. It's like I want to go back in the water. I don't want to go down. So Chris is moody because Hachi has just gone and rolled in dust, muscles, and whatever else not. Mus and muscles, stinking flies, and anti-fouling. <laughs> of coming off the boat. What? <laughs> And say Luna's a little bit excited. You are crazy, big girl. I'm just in here dismantling what I can now from this side. It's really tight access. You can probably have a look. Um, so I'm, I'm just getting bits and pieces off. So I've cut the hose tail off. I've cut the, I've got the, one of the f fittings out, so I'm just sort of slowly getting this apart. As you can tell, our works in the uh, V-Birth and bulk, um, bunk cabins are full ahead because, my God, the boat looks like it's been hit by a hurricane. Well, one thing I can check right now is if I got the right hose size. So I did, so that's a relief. So that's going on. So the hose size this side right. And what the good thing with these true designs is if you buy a couple of extra fittings, you know, you can you can pretty much cope with nearly any installation issue. So there's I guess you'd call that the basic configuration of a true design. So you've got the you know the the, the through hull part. So we'll be 
so there's unless you drop it and break it so there's the through hole part so we'll be fitting that later we've got the the valve itself and we've got a hose tail so once you get the base kit like that you can add a few bits that will help you cope with nearly any installation issue so you've got a uh a threaded elbow a threaded elbow and another sort of threaded hose tail and that's good because supposing you know you, you can come off the through hull and in our case we're right next to a little bulkhead so it's really tight so so that lets us turn the turn 90 degrees to what's going on and then you know the the valve can go in and heck even if you want if you wanted to do another turn you can do that so so many configurations that you can bring together here that just let you, you know, for, for the want of two extra bits, maybe 15, 15 pounds or something, you can really cope with uh, most installation issues. So hopefully we'll be able to find a configuration that um, that will work here. And again, you know, if we if we're desperate, we can we can turn the hose barb itself. Uh, we can have a straight out of that. Or we could, you know, so it should let us cope with any any issue. Now the one thing that we haven't got here is the uh, the load bearing collar, and that would sit and help this support itself in the hull. We don't really need it here. There's not. It, it is a little storage area, but it's not like things can get a lot of space to move around in there. And it is a, a, a bigger through hole, so by the time you've got all this area clamped into the hole, retake. By the time you've got all this area clamped into the hole, it's it's probably fine. And a true design recommend, uh, you know, if you shouldn't have many threads showing. Once that's clamped into the hole, they want that to be as down low as possible, and that's that's just good practice because you don't want a lot of bending moment on that if you can avoid it. Um, the further away it is, the more leverage. So we'll cut that down if need be. Uh, True Design also recommend that you use an adhesive sealant, something like Sikaflex 291i or something like that, to 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 set all this up. So it, it's not a it's not a tapered thread. It's a parallel thread on these, and the reason for that is it, it just gives you really good thread contact. Design give you a a parallel thread on these is that it gives you a lot of sort of sealing surface and and a lot of area for the the, the the adhesive to work on so ideally you want to be setting these up so everything comes up nice and tight in the right orientation so we'll, we'll get it um, dry fitted up and make sure everything's in the right location mark it put a few marks on things and uh, and then get the get the goopy stuff out and go for it Love these, love these things. These are really good. They're um, they feel so solid and chunky, and you know you don't you don't have to worry about uh, corrosion and desinkification and the service life of them uh, of a of a metal one. So yeah, I'm all. So lucky for you, you're gonna get a how to guide on fitting a True Design Seacock today. Oh, hey, these three stinking animals are not getting back on board this boat. Hachi was rolling in the mussels in the dust. Luna has clearly been in the sea and rolling in the mussels and dust. And Mimi, you can't see the mussels and dust because she's black. No. <laughs> Bad decision making, guys. Bad decision making. Luna, you are a disgrace. Don't eat the dirt. Luna. Luna! Look at the state of you! Oh my goodness! Sit! No, she's just... Oh god... Luna, look at the state of you! My goodness! So, we are now gonna try and get the old seacock off! Oh, hey! I just noticed. So that's what's going in there. I just noticed that, you know, this is a sink drain and it's quite a small hole for a sink drain. And, you know, we've had some issues where it's been clogging up before. So 
I think going for the one inch um, seacock is probably going to benefit us overall here. Plus, we might we might end up using this as an intake or another drain for the washing or so, you know, when we're in the future. So that's a good thing. So I've got some weapons of choice here. Uh, Multi-tool, saw blade, flappy grinder wheel. Flappy. Flappy. <laughs> so let's see how we get on. And the easy way to get this off is just lop the head off of it and then extract it on the inside because it's all bound up and tight on the inside and it's, this is just the easy way to do it. So let's go for it. I've not taken too much of the hull off with my enthusiastic grinding, but then we, we need a bigger hole anyway for this, so that's gonna cut the mustard. The laminate thickness on this boat's crazy. So I just need to punch that out now. I'll give a wee tickle with the grindy. A tickle with the grindy. <laughs> so we can see what's going on with this fitting. So you can see a, a tiny wee seacock, a through hull fitting that's actually been glassed into a uh, a hole that they made a bit big and uh, you know we might be in luck here if we can get that out then this might be the the correct size so I'll go get some more tools and I'll see if I can knock that through what have you all been up to huh rolling and stuff you smell you smell so bad bye Hatchy We've got the perfect caveman tools for this. So we've got a scrappy bit of threaded rod from the yard and a rock. Ah, that's going well. <laughs> that's well in there. Phase two. I think I'm going to have to um, continue attacking this with big guns. We'll have another couple of hits, see what happens. I don't want it to go in, I want it to come out. Oh, I've really f***ed that up. Oh. How not to do it? <laughs> so, as you can see, this is going spectacularly well for us. I have to say, Gibsy put this in quite well. They've actually resined it in instead of uh, sealant. So, I think we'll be here for a wee bit of time. Yeah. Right, I need to get some bigger and better tools. More better. -er. So I've just successfully got the old one. Well, I say successfully. I hit it with a hammer and I smashed it off of the fitting. So we've still got a bit to get out of the hull. But uh, there you can see the, the resin, I guess, that it was put in with. And um, that was all bonded to the hull. You can look inside there and you can see all the the marine growth and the calcification that was in there and that uh, that was our attempt at slowing the leak down it didn't work this doesn't work can't recommend electrical tape to fix a hole in your boat the leak was um it was coming up from somewhere in there and uh you know we we, we tried tightening up that screw don't know if that would have been the solution or not okay so that's uh that's come off of there and that's where our leak was so it's not exactly, uh, you know, it's not a boat sinking leak. It's just an annoying leak. But it was dripping in quite regularly and quite steadily. So yeah. gauging with the fact that there was a couple of cups of water in there, um, within a short time frame of us clearing it out, it's not where we want to be. By comparison, um, just look at the bulkiness of that compared I'm pretty sure it's the same sort of idea. That would compress onto the, the, the ball, much like that does. But does that not just look a bit more chunky and... Yeah. Yeah. It does look better. That's the through hole part in, but we've not bonded it in yet. We're just trying to get a feel for how this is all going to go together now. This bulkhead is not helping. It's really in the way. I can't get that on like that. Like I could get that on like that, to be honest, but 
it's not the best it's probably best practice to get this on to that that's best practice because then if there's a blockage you can rod out through from the hull so so that's good practice we could get that that'd be great now we could get that but what we'd have to do is screw this in from the outside as we go because this isn't going to let us turn um, and I don't think you can take the handle, I'm not sure if you can take the handle off maybe we could try that so I'm going to try and see if we can get the, the through hull direct onto the fitting because that would be the best situation of all so I'm, I'm going to try taking the handle off and seeing if that will actually screw onto what we've got so we know that's open and it fits on like so so that's open and it wants to shut that way so can this now screw on now that's great because that makes life a lot easier if we can actually just screw that direct on now will it end up in the right place for us and I would say that's a win. So there's only one configuration in which um, the seacoat's actually going to go in at the angle that it's at. Um, so I'm going to go and help Chris and basically try and twiggle it in um, while he's holding it, basically screw into position and uh, hope for the best. I'm just going off a file of some sort to try and uh, get these tabs um, turning. <laughs> Let's tune it already. Mm. With an acetone wipe. Oh, broke it. We're using Sikaflex 291i. It's an adhesive sealant. It's one of the sealants recommended by True Design. And this is where you just go goopy happy. <laughs> and hope for the best. And hope for the best. So I'm gonna go and use that goop to set up the inside. And so that's what you gotta do. Either gotta Grip it like that and turn mm -hmm. and do your best and hold it solid when I ask you to. So that's our seacog fitted and let me show you what we've, uh, we've done. So this was great fun to fit. So the, the outer thread piece, we had to screw that in from the outside and somehow get the backing nut and the U-bend tight, which we managed to achieve after a lot of faffing with it. It's all been well done up with what the 291i Sikaflex. Um, we had to take the handle off to spin this on. Uh, the hose barb, the valve, the U-bend, it's all been well, well sealed in the threads and tightened up as much as we can get it. Handle ended up in this position here. So that's, that's off and that's open, so that's good. And the, the hose sorted out quite a nice lead coming in, so I'm, I'm pleased with that. I had to use a bit of heat to soften up the, the hose to get it onto the barb. But there we go, it's on nice and tight now, all the way to the shoulder and two stainless hose clamps. So that's great, it's all done. We've got some anti-fill on the outside, so we're ready to go in tomorrow and uh, crossing our fingers that we've done it right. Guess who's winning? Because it ain't you, me. nor it ain't me. you, me. it's certainly me! No. So they're currently arguing as to who's going to keep the yellows so no that I yellow. can't get them because they are chickens and they're me. scared they're going to lose. The Jasper, even if it is just one, you've got a hundred there, why don't you put a house? You know, I guess! Yes. What, look, look how much money mum's got. Uh. One of us is going to lose. Yeah. <laughs>
200 and 20 yeah. for Jasper. Yeah. Oh, wait, you don't have oh, that much. <laughs> right, okay, oh, so no. Remember once upon a time you wanted the gas company, Jasper? It's worth 150. There's 150 worth of the money. 120. Uh, you, you made the worst deals. Right, so <laughs> it's unlucky. Downing Street, two houses, 190. Chris is about to roll on the death zone. I don't want to go in here, man. Come on, roll. Come on, that's big. Oh! Four, one, two, three, four. Oh, that's only 200 for now. <laughs> What do you want? I want the red. Oh, hold on, I've got 200! Oh, you have 200. Oh, beautiful. I'll just take that. We have all gone and it's Chris's turn to go again from my station past my death patch. Yeah. So come on, oh, roll. No, I don't want to roll. Come on, roll. I've got, actually, I've, I, I, I want a safe bet. Actually, I've got the gas company. So if I, I could land on chance with the gas company. I managed to, like, Badger that off to Jasper in payment for his previous landing on, on the guns. Right, come on. I hear you, Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, okay, here we go. Oh! One, two, three, chance! <laughs> yes! Oh, God, go to jail. Hallelujah. So, Chrissy, who won? I will concede that Daria had a significant advantage. At the end of the uh, at the end of the game, and we let her win. Oh, <laughs> I beat you all hands down. It wasn't looking good. We we were just hemorrhaging cash and properties. Well, good morning from a very very wet boatyard this morning. We managed to fit our seacoat yesterday and tidy up the boat a little bit. Chris is currently taking the boat, uh, the doggies for uh, a little run around and I think we're going to go back in the water in the next half an hour. You better be good. Right, leave it. Mimi. Ah. Leave it. No. Leave it. Leave it. So I'm just checking uh, our seacock installation and it seems to be perfectly fine. It is bone dry. Fabulous! <laughs>